let's get some things done this year, okay? So this meeting will come to order. We see it as the Senate's responsibility to remind everyone over and over again about the need for transparency, about the need for communication. The Financial Affairs Committee is going to be working this uh, year to achieve timely access to a transparent college-wide budget. We are going to work, as Barbara said, for the appointment of a faculty representative to collaborate with senior administrators and the Board of Trustees throughout the entire budget process. And we also would like to press and continue to press a change in the college's fiscal year to match the academic year. Well, he's very, very committed to working with faculty and, and departments. And what I understand the next step to be is to take kind of a survey of the recommendations that went up, the president's recommendations and, and the two teams' recommendations, and kind of kick those back mm. to the departments and have the departments and individual programs study those and, and start to make some I, decisions about which ones are best to move forward with and that kind of thing. And so on that issue, he's been extremely open and collaborative. We still have three faculty members on that committee just like we did the last time we searched for a president. It, it's the proportional representation that matters. Um, the last time we searched for a president, there were two board members out of 12 on that committee. Now there are 12 out of 21. So we've gone from one-sixth of the committee being a board, being board members, to over half. The last time, there are other discrepancies, but I'm calling out the couple that are of interest to us. The last time where there were combined five faculty and chairs, five out of 12, so almost half, now there are four out of 21, so less than one-fifth. And we've lost a faculty place there. It was a chair that we lost. Um, this matters because the advisory panel votes to send candidates forward to the Board of Trustees. The fact that the Board of Trustees ultimately hires the president has not changed, but no candidate, according to the Board of Trustees bylaws, may go as a viable candidate unless it is voted on by two-thirds of that panel. Well, now we have over half of that panel's board members, and less than one-fifth are faculty and chairs. We expressed our concern that these changes um, might undermine the faith of faculty in the search process itself. The bottom line to that discussion is that the advisory panel stands as is. So that's what we're working under. Um, in light of the proportionally weaker representation of faculty and chairs on the advisory panel, um, the executive committee um, proposes that we reaffirm our trust in and support for those three faculty members that were elected, in essence saying while your proportional voice is weaker, we want to remind you that you actually carry the voice of the full faculty. We as members of the deaf and hard of hearing community and as academic colleagues in the fields of ASL and interpreting find this proposal quite offensive on more than one level. There is an enduring misconception that the cochlear implants are equivalent to a cure for deafness, whereas they are not. Technology that may enable deaf people to utilize sound does not change the essential identity of a deaf person. They are still deaf, and a visual <coughs> language is the primary choice and means of communication. We are open to recommendations that would allow our department to serve the community better, to expand our program offerings. In fact, we plan to expand the program with a new major in deaf studies. Yet, we would never dismiss the community of, or our field of study as one that will someday cease to exist, because nothing could be further from the truth. Therefore, we ask that the aforementioned proposal be withdrawn from the recommendation. In the words of a well-known, well-respected, and well-loved deaf leader, George Vedas, written 99 years ago, as long as we have deaf people on earth, we will have our signs. Our beautiful sign language is the noblest gift God has given to deaf people. Thank you. So they have not seen their, the people who have been promoted have not seen their um, salaries moved up. We had some money that, that was just like a one-year thing that um, was in the provost budget where we decided to bring up the floors. And again, it was art, not science. It's like, how can we spread this money and bring people at the very bottom of each rank up? The budget process has been very, very delayed. And really, it's just 
today, I think, that academic affairs has its sort of final say on where we are. And we have to make very, very big cuts. But given our current budget situation, I think the faculty needs to know, we're making $5 million of cuts. There have been staff reductions. And staff reductions are going to be ongoing. So we are faced now, within academic affairs, making a $2 million cut to our fiscal 13 budget. So departments, deans, budget managers, my office have to look and see. So when I say I'm going, I don't know exactly, but I know that I eliminated someone's job this week. Um, it's very likely that this is going to be a source of finding some that money. I understand we're uh, in difficult economic times, and we have just gone through a year of, uh, you know, uh, uh, our self-study, studying ways to cut money uh, to make ourselves more efficient, etc. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, although you know, I'd love to get some extra cash, and I think a lot of us uh, uh, have been talking this point about morale. Uh, I'm also thinking about our students right now, who you know were just uh, 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 faced with an. 5.25% raise in their tuition, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, last year there were lots of student protests, and um, how is it going to make us look that in these kinds of times we're going to get a 3% raise, and then at the same time to make that happen, um, staff positions are going to disappear. Well, I can only tell you in our music department we have an incredible lack of staff, and that really affects student morale just as much as their tuition rates. So, I just want to bring it to the forefront. Was that part of the discussion? So some of that increase in the tuition is to get our our tuition price up enough that we can give financial aid back to the because we had the other thing is that frankly, Columbia was at one time a school of last resort. Mm -hmm. Columbia is now a destination school. Mm -hmm. So we can attract students who can pay more and then hopefully give some of that money back to students who can afford it, so we can keep our academically and artistically able students who have the financial need. I think the, certainly the welfare of our students and our less advantaged colleagues is very much in our forefront, in, in our minds. Here, here. One thing that bothers me a little bit is that we're not really talking about salary cuts for those who are well above each yes, of exactly. the salaries, especially when it comes to a man. I mean, it seems that we're linking from uh, uh, raising salaries of those at the bottom of each floor to eliminating lower staff positions. So I want to know no, no, how much of the discussion of salary cuts of those who are well compensated is taking place in this discussion. Okay, I mean, we've cut travel, we've certainly cut self-entertainment and uh, catering and the way we wine and dine, both outsiders and insiders. I mean, there have been cuts. But no salary cuts. Cut. And capital, too. I mean. Academic affairs is half the budget, but there have been important capital projects that have been postponed, like the moving of the library to the 820 building. I mean, there are big, big decisions that are made. But so, no salary cuts. Pardon? But any salary cuts? Like in the no. upper level of yes. yes. No. Um, I can tell you for myself what I did, and anyone else is free to do this, obviously, because when I got made interim provost last year, putting two jobs together, I got a, somewhat of a boost, nothing like, <laughs> like the two salaries, but a little bit. And there was talk then about maybe cutting people's salaries, but I said, no, I think that we should give it back as donation or whatever part, and I did that. Um, and I think any one in the upper administration is, can do that. To cut, I think it's a little harsh, but I think that people should, in their own conscience, give some of it. Give significant amount back. Um, the other thing that could happen, but it didn't, and it got announced, so it didn't happen, is there could be, there could have been a lesser raise for people over a certain amount. That's something that gets discussed. I think that would be a reasonable thing, but it didn't happen this time. Around. But if you mean, I guess I thought that you meant some of those faculty that are very highly paid being cut. I remember, no, that, you know, that I don't. Are we about ready to vote on the